Hello everyone, Andy Wolverton here at Journeys in Darkness and Light. And today I'm going to take a look at the new film noir and neo-noir releases for February 2023. But before I do that, I would like to say hello to everyone at the Noir City Film Festival in Oakland, California. I know you're having a great time. I wish I could be there. I'm really going to try to be there in 2024. Now, we've been seeing a trend for the past few months where not many titles are being released on physical media from the classic film noir era. And people may be asking, has everything already been released? No, not at all. In fact, I devoted an entire video to this subject called Film Noir on Physical Media. Is this all there is? I'll link to that and you can find it in the channel. Most of what we've already seen lately, however, is a string of movies that are made after the classic noir era. So with that in mind, let's kick off February's new releases with a film that is from the classic era. But is it truly film noir? Well, you've got crime and you've got Humphrey Bogart. That's a pretty good start. Really, that's all you need, right? On February the 6th, we get a UK Region B release of The Enforcer from 1951. This was released originally in the US from Olive Films back in 2013. Wow, 10 years ago. More on that in a moment. Bogart plays assistant DA Martin Ferguson, who for years has been after Albert Mendoza, played by Everett Sloan, the man in charge of Murder Incorporated, a murder-for-hire organization. Just how would you market that? Mendoza's right-hand man, played by Ted DeCorsia, is prepared to cut a deal with Ferguson and turn state's evidence against his boss. But can Ferguson keep him alive long enough to testify? The Enforcer is certainly a crime picture, but is it a film noir? I'll let you decide. I like the film, but it's really not talked about all that much. Like the Olive release from several years ago, this Region B disc appears to contain no extras, which is a real shame, especially for anyone interested in examining Bogart at this point in his career, and the fact that this was his last film for Warner Brothers. The disc also appears to be struck from the same source material as the Olive release. If you're a Bogart fan, though, this one's a no-brainer especially if you live in the UK or if you have a region free player. For American buyers, the Olive release is still available. But stop right there. Before you pick this one up, know that it is included in an upcoming box set from the Australian label Imprint. That's coming soon. Stay tuned for more on that. On February the 7th from Kino Lorber, another entry in the Esther Williams meets film noir subgenre, Raw Wind in Eden from 1958. You may remember that back in November 2022, Kino released another Esther Williams noir called The Unguarded Moment. By the way, my friend Laura at Laura's Miscellaneous Musings recently reviewed The Unguarded Moment, so I'll put up a link in the description so you can check that out. That one featured Williams in a non-swimming role, but Raw Wind in Eden has her back in a swimsuit with a little swimming and other activities, but mainly noir mayhem. Many of the images I'm showing here are in black and white, but the film is in color. Williams plays Laura, a fashion model who's flying with her boyfriend Wally, played by Carlos Thompson, to attend a yacht party in the Mediterranean. Unfortunately, the plane crashes near a small island where Laura and Wally find a former World War II medic named Mark Moore, played by Jeff Chandler, a native man named Urbano, and his daughter, played by Rosanna Podesto. The yacht Laura and Wally were going to board appears, but without the yacht's owner who invited the couple. Mystery? Intrigue? Passion? Double crosses? Could be worth a look. The film was shot in Italy off the Tuscan coast in Cinemascope for Universal. 
This release is struck from a 2K master and contains a new audio commentary by film historian David Del Val and film historian filmmaker David Kramer. Here's a film I hadn't heard of until just a few days ago. One letterboxed user calls it Elevator to the Gallows meets Psycho meets In Cold Blood. It's called A Woman Kills from 1968, directed by Jean-Denis Bonin, coming to us on February the 7th from Radiance Films, a new label focusing on films, books, and merchandise from a variety of genres. Now, the film itself, it's a story we're familiar with. After a series of prostitute murders, the police have found the killer. But after the killer is tried, convicted, and executed, the murders continue. Awkward when that happens. But the executioner begins a relationship with the investigating officer on the case, who suspects things are not as they appear. I know my description is pretty vague, but I don't want to disclose too much about the film. A Woman Kills may sound conventional, but it's not. It has an interesting history. Its director, Jean-Denis Bonin, wasn't able to get distribution for the picture due to a controversy over his first film. It's a short called The Sadness of the Anthropophagie. A Woman Kills didn't see distribution for 45 years, but now we can see it. You can pick it up from MVD, Diabolic, and Grindhouse. The Radiance Films website claims it's region free, but Blu-ray.com claims it's available in separate region A and region B editions. So check closely when you order. The release also contains several extras, including an audio commentary from critics Kat Ellinger and Virginie Salovey, and an introduction by Salovey, a 37 minute documentary called On the Margin, the Cursed Films of Jean-Denis Bonin, five short films by Bonin, including the one I mentioned earlier, a trailer, newly translated English subtitles, a limited edition 52-page booklet that's packed with writing and interviews, and a reversible sleeve with original and newly commissioned artwork. This is a limited edition of 2,000 copies. You may want to take a chance on this one, especially if you're looking for something a little different. On February the 14th, just in time for Valentine's Day, Kino Lorber brings us The Bride Wore Black from 1968, directed by Francois Truffaut. The film opens with Julie Kohler, played by Jean Moreau, dressed in black, attempting to end it all by jumping from an upstairs window. Rescued by her mother, Julie calms herself and takes a long trip to get away from it all. During the trip, she meets several men and removes their names from her little black book. She's really removing more than their names. The title really tells the whole story. It's based on a novel by Cornell Woolrich. The Bride Wore Black owes an obvious debt, though, to the work of Alfred Hitchcock. But the film was scorned by the French critics and audiences at the time being too much of a French New Wave meets Hollywood type of picture. Truffaut practically disowned the film, being disappointed with several aspects of the production, mainly due to frequent arguments with cinematographer Raoul Coutard during the filming. I haven't seen this one since I was in college, but I'm eager to visit it. Now, this does not appear to be a new scan, but rather the same transfer used in the long out of print 2015 release from Twilight Time. In fact, the Kino ports over the Twilight Time commentary with Julie Kurgo, Stephen C. Smith, and Nick Redman, and a trailer. Let's stick around France for a bit longer with another Truffaut film, as well as another Cornell Woolrich adaptation, this time writing under the name William Irish. This is Mississippi Mermaid from 1969, and I know what you're thinking. Andy, this is not film noir. But I beg to differ. Louis, played by Jean-Paul Belmondo, is a wealthy tobacco plantation owner who's found a wife through a personal ad in a newspaper. 
Yet, when his bride arrives, named Julie, played by Catherine Deneuve, she doesn't look like the photo. Hey, he's not complaining. It's Catherine Deneuve. But Julie starts displaying some questionable behavior, like running off with all the money from her new husband's bank account. To tell you more would be unfair, but know that Mississippi Mermaid is a difficult movie to pin down. Is it a drama, a mystery, a noir? If you're an inquisitive viewer, I think you're going to enjoy watching the film and thinking about it afterward. Now, some critics love it, some despise it. That's the type of film that I want to watch, and I hope you'll want to watch it too. As is the case with The Bride Wore Black, Mississippi Mermaid ports over the audio commentary from the 2015 Twilight Time release, a discussion with Julie Kurgo and Nick Redmond, and also they throw in a trailer. And if you just can't get enough of Truffaut, Kino is also releasing The Story of Adele H. from 1975 on February the 14th, and a four-film set on February the 14th as well. The Francois Truffaut Collection, featuring The Wild Child, Small Change, The Man Who Loved Women, and The Green Room, all films from the 1970s. However, none of them are film noir. And on February the 28th, we close out the month with the third season of Magray from Kino Lorber, leaving one season to go. We've discussed this British TV series before, mostly focusing on the Network UK release of the entire series, which I covered in my August 2021 new releases video. You'll find it at about the two and a half minute mark. And that's going to do it for February. A bit disappointing, but pretty soon we'll see what's coming for our March video, so stay tuned. Remember, release dates often change, and if I hear of those changes, I'll be sure to let you know. And if you know of any films that I've missed, please connect with me and let me know, and I will update these descriptions in the videos. Everybody take care, be safe, and watch some great movies.